Welcome. Hello. Hi, Tater. How are you? Hope everybody's good. Everybody's having a, a, an awesome summer. Hi, Liliana. Hi, Heather Rose. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Oh my gosh. Uh, hi, Alex. Welcome. Why are you excited, Alex? <laughs> You'll have to tell us. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, we are drawing birds. We are. If that's what you're excited about, then awesome, because that is, that is what we're doing today. Yes. So drawing birds is one of my favorites. I um, uh, my favorite medium to work in is just in all the all all of art <laughs> is not actually drawing and it's not actually painting or sculpture. It well, it's kind of sculpture. It's ceramics. So one of the things that I love to do is I um, I have a ceramic wheel and I I like throw my own pieces and. Uh, one of the common themes that I decorate my bowls and my mugs and my plates with is, um, and planters with, is birds. <laughs> They're like one of my favorite things to draw. So I'm kind of excited too. And before I went on a trip, because I was gone for the last three weeks, but before that, we were focusing on a different animal a week. So I know Tater, I know Liliana, Heather Rose, you guys were there. Alex, I'm not sure if you were there or not. But the idea behind focusing in on one animal per class was really to kind of start to think about the anatomy uh, under that's underlying the shape. So whenever Chuck Jones or pretty much any cartoonist draws a character, they they start with we know they start with simple shapes to come up with their character. But a lot of them base their characters on animals or uh, people and um they to do that they have to like you have to kind of think about what the anatomy or what the parts are underneath so and i think birds are really interesting because they're one of those things that we don't usually think about the anatomy of so i'm going to show you guys some pictures in a minute welcome des um to <laughs> what uh the the underside of a bird or the inside of a bird really looks like so here let me switch cameras so that you guys can see what I'm seeing. Oh, also, just so you know, for demonstration today, I'm going to be drawing using um, a uh, a chart or a um, like a midtone paper. It's just like brown paper, graph paper, and I'm going to be using um, pencil. And I also have a white charcoal pencil that I'm going to be using to add some highlights to my drawing. So if you have that, you can use that. But I know, Tater, I know you work digitally. Liliana, Heather Rose, use whatever you have. Alex, Birdman, use whatever you have. And Des and Max, you guys can use whatever you have too. So all right, let me switch cameras. Okay, so let me turn this light off. There we go. So here is just an image I found on the internet that kind of was like a, a good example of, you know, this is a bird bird. I have no, I, I wish I knew bird, uh, uh, like, 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 I, I wish I could pinpoint different types of birds. I, I really only know like, hum, like the basics, like hummingbird and toucan, but like, I couldn't tell you what, what kind of bird this is, but it's a pretty, pretty basic bird shape. You can see it's got like, uh, kind of an oval wedge shape for the body. There's like a circle for the head, triangles for the nose, for the beak, some stem cylindrical piece, uh, bits for the leg, but what I wonder if you if you uh, I'm going to show you what this bird looks like underneath. So if you took all the skin off, <laughs> this is actually even if you take off these these tail feathers, this is what a bird looks like without any feathers. <laughs> it kind of looks like a plucked chicken. Um, but you actually see that the bird's leg it actually has um, like a, a knee. It, his knee is just up here, but we don't ever see that knee because it's always tucked up behind these all these feathers. And a bird's wings are controlled by their little arm. So that's where like the bird's wings are coming from. They're just like controlled by his little arm that's up there. So if I if you put the two together, I have one more. That's kind of like a blend of what they look like <laughs> with the with the bird underneath. And I always thought that was really interesting to see how like really what a bird looks like when it is, you know, featherless. Because <laughs> it kind of puts into perspective like, oh, that's how the bird, like that's where the wings are coming from. It's using these arm muscles up here to like flap them. Um, 
and it's using these leg muscles to like you know control its legs to to, to stand on uh branches and things but I don't know about you, but I thought that was really cool. Of course, not all birds are gonna look exactly like this. This is just particular to whatever variety bird this is, but this is like a pretty generic looking bird. <laughs> so I thought we could start by drawing a bird maybe in a more realistic way. And then we'll talk about how you can kind of exaggerate the bird to make it more cartoony. <laughs> all right, okay. so. Like I said, I'm going to draw on um, just brown paper and it's been a while guys. I'm, I'm a little rusty. So you got to be patient with me. I'm going to get back in the game too. So this is, we'll see, we'll see how this drawing goes. <laughs> but one of the things that I'm, I'd like to start with um, are those simple basic shapes. So I'm going to start with kind of a, an oval here and you'll have to tell me, I, I'm going to go a little darker than I normally would because I want you to be able to see it. So I'd start with like an, a big oval that's kind of coming up at an angle like that. That's going to be the body of the bird. And then the head is going to be a circle about right up here. I don't want to add in any of those details, any details yet until I have kind of the, the general outline. I'm actually going to add a little line here. It's kind of going to show that's like the direction the bird is going to be facing. I'm not even going to add the beak in or any of that yet because I'm just trying to think about like where, where, like what the bird, what the bird is doing. Bird. Oops. One second, guys. My printer is doing something weird. Okay. Um, another thing that I like to think about is from here. You got to think about like where that tail is coming from. So the tail doesn't actually come straight out. It's actually kind of coming out at a little bit of an angle. So it's kind of coming out like this. So I'm going to add in like a little bit of like a triangular shape here. And then its tail feathers are kind of coming around, out like this. Like that. And I'm going to add in more detail later. Okay. Um, his wings. So there's, well, let's, let's go ahead and connect these lines first. So let's go ahead and let's do got a little line here that's connecting that and a little line here that's connecting this. I think this, this head's a little bit too big, but that's okay. Um, now his wings. So, so his legs actually, let's do his legs. His legs are actually going to come out at an angle because as we saw, like this, I know I'm drawing him backwards, but his leg, or its leg, I don't, know if it's, I don't know what the gender of this bird is, but his leg is kind of like, if I was gonna draw it in, it would, it would kind of curve around like that. <laughs> and then it would come out and then, yeah, I guess it would be, actually it would come out like this, it'd be like this, sorry, it'd be like this. And then it would be like that. So it kind of comes out low. But actually, I'm going to erase that because I think that's a little low for this bird. This bird that I'm drawing isn't ex the exact same bird as the bird that I have here. So his leg's going to kind of come out at an angle like that. Okay. Just like that. And his wings are going to kind of come around. And there's going to, you're going to start maybe kind of like a little bit to the middle bottom of this oval that you've done. And the first wing is, or the, the, the wing that's in the front is going to kind of come down here like this. And like I said, I'm not drawing any particular bird. I'm just drawing a bird bird. <laughs> like there's no one bird that I'm drawing here. It's really just a bird. So he's got a wing that's kind of going to come down like that. And his head's gonna kind of come around like that. So I'm just using an HB pencil and I'm just kind of penciling in these art, these shapes. Now I can kind of think about the head a little bit. So the head, the beak is gonna be, you know, it's just, it's a triangular form, but usually the top part of the beak is a little bit larger than the bottom. So there's like triangle here and there's underneath it's coming out like that. And then Kind of comes down like that and then the bird's eye is just set back a little bit here 
depending on the breed of the bird, breed? What's the word, species, the bird species? <laughs> um, uh, the eyes can be bigger or smaller for this basic bird. It's just gonna have like a, you know, a, like a medium sized eye out there. And then a lot of what I'm gonna do today on this drawing to make it more realistic is I'm gonna be adding in some shading um, and uh, I'm going to do some shading in the, with the feathers. And I think I might break out this white charcoal pencil. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to shade in. So I'm working on this um, dark, like a tone paper, mid-tone paper, which is kind of nice because a lot of the bird is defined by its texture. And the texture of a bird is feathers. And so I'm just going to work in, I'm starting with some light, like lines going in this direction and going to start to like bump up the contrast so the top part of his head is going to be a little bit lighter the top part of his head is going to have a little bit more um highlights and for this variety of bird i think he's going to have like a whole section down here that is white so i'm just looking and what i'm doing is i'm just looking at a picture of a bird when i'm i like to look at images when i work um, cause I think it helps me, uh, it, well, I think it helps anybody, um, uh, kind of get a sense of what you're drawing. So I am using some reference images. I don't have them printed. Otherwise I would show them to you, but I am just, it's just, I, like I said, it's a bird bird. <laughs> so I'm going to add in some shadows here. I'm going to darken this eye up a little bit. Bottom of his beak is going to be a little bit in shadow. So anything on the top of him, the sun is kind of shining from the top. So the top is going to be, <laughs> is going to be a little lighter. Sorry, I just read your commentator. I completely agree. <laughs> I completely agree. That would be a good like monster. I mean, if you think about it, this was like what dinosaurs were too. Like, like birds aren't birds evolutionarily, just like descendants of dinosaurs. <laughs> Or dinosaur, yeah. So like, I, uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like in Jurassic Park there might have been some really kind of creepy horror movie esque, um, uh, like birds, <laughs> bird, bird type horror monster. Okay, so I'm gonna add in, I'm adding in some dark tones here. I'm just adding in some lines. I so when I when I'm shading. I'm trying to make my strokes go in the same direction that the, the feathers actually would. So like uh, you're kind of fitting your strokes to the form and that and the direction of your strokes will actually help um, define the form. So, all right, I'm gonna actually use them. I'm gonna start breaking out this charcoal pencil. I'm gonna use some white. I'm gonna define this area here. So the top part of his eye is where the highlights are. So I'm going to add some, some of those like highlights in up here. See this the little ridge under the bottom of his eye. I'm going to fill this in. The feathers are going this direction. So a lot of what makes a bird a bird is the feather pattern. And so a lot of it is just learning. A lot of this, a lot of this lesson today is about texture and how you add texture onto um, onto a, a form. And texture does take time. There's a lot of uh, work that texture, making good texture, like it, it just, just takes time. <laughs> so I'm just going to add in this. So this is like making a realistic drawing is definitely not as quick as a cartoon. I'm adding in some of this highlights up here to the beak. And that's 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 probably why like all cartoon cartoonish um, uh, if 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 you did a cartoon with realistic creatures and characters, it would take you so much longer to make. It would take the artist so much longer to make than it would it, um, doing it by uh, like keeping your your characters simple. Like when you're doing a cartoon, because you're drawing their characters over and over and over again, it really is helpful to keep your your figures simple. And what we're doing right now is kind of the opposite of that. 
which is okay. This is also really, really good practice. One of the reasons I like working on mid-tone paper like this is because when you're working on white paper, because the paper is, is already, you start with white, the, um, you can't really get the, the value. So value is the, 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 the difference in lightness and darkness of a, of a shade. So like right now, because I'm working on mid-tone, I can add white to this to make it really look, um, to, make, to make the values kind of really come out. Whereas if I'm working on a white piece of paper, I have to go really, really dark. You have to go darker than you normally would on, on this kind of paper. So this, you actually get a little bit more contrast between the white and the dark when you work with a mid-tone paper. Mid-tone papers are really, really good for that. So like, and I like using them for, um, for drawing things realistically. I also like using them um, uh, just when I, when, I, when I draw like people, and I just, I think there, you can, the, you can use paper that's this color. This is kind of like the craft brown color, but also sometimes grays are really nice to work with. So I just enjoy using them because they really make, they, you can, you can get your colors to really pop when you're, when you're working on a mid-tone paper. All right, I'm going to go put that aside. So I'm adding this in. All right. I'm just taking, so the three pencils I'm using, I'm using an HB pencil. And those are, that's the pencil that I, that I use to kind of get the lines and kind of define things. Then I use that white charcoal pencil to add in highlights. And then I'm also using a, a 3B pencil, which is a little bit um, darker graphite to add in some of the darker tones. And I, I actually haven't used that, the, the 3B too much. I'm going to go in and add that in a minute. But let's work in here. And I'm always keeping my, my strokes kind of short, kind of working in the same direction as the fur would go, the fur, the feathers would go, excuse me. So now I'm actually gonna take that, that 3B and I'm gonna see if I can make some of the darker areas even a little bit darker. So I'm gonna to try to up that contrast. So like adding, even up, making it a little darker in the eyes like right on the underside of the beak is really nice and dark. Um, I think there's a little bit of darkness over here in my image, darkness over here, like a little layer of dark around the neck. So I wouldn't ever go into this much detail if I wasn't confident that I had the shape right on my, the rest of my bird. Because if now, if I found out, oh, this head was too small or this head is too big, um, I would have already done so much work and, and added so much detail into this that I would, it would be really hard to go back and have to fix, I'd probably have to start over um, to fix up this, or I'd have to erase the rest of the body to make, to fit the head. <laughs> so you don't ever want to go into as much detail as I've already done unless you are confident that the shape is right. Okay, so I think that's good. A little bit darker. I'm going. So I'm just I'm kind of going back and forth and back and forth and bumping up the highlights, bumping up the shadows, because that's what makes a, a realistic drawing look really realistic is when you um, have that strong contrast. So I'm going to use my um, my gummy eraser. I'm just going to erase a little bit of the lines around it. I can zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better there. Now that you can see a little better what I've, some of what I've drawn so far. Let me make sure that's in focus. There we go, a little bit better. I think the top of the beak is a little bit bright, so I'm actually gonna tone that down just a little bit. I'm gonna take my 3B pencil, I'm just gonna blend a little bit on top of it, make it look a little bit duller, so it's a little bright. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my HB, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna shade, just doing a little bit of shading going in this direction like this, to kind of give this body a little bit of color. So I know it's a little hard to see on the camera, but I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of a mid-tone, a little bit of gray on the wing right here. So birds are like, one of the more simple animals to draw because they really are, they don't have a lot of, um, 
like the anatomy is simple compared to ma to other to mammals like compared to like a what we have been doing like a dog and a horse and a cat there's not a lot going on uh with a bird it's fairly simple um that being said though there is a lot of texture and a lot of like um parts to the wings which we can add in um and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and add that in in a second. But I'm just gonna start up here. I'm gonna add in some of these short little lines. So what really kind of defines a, a bird is like the 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 feather patterns on the wings and the, and the feather patterns around him. So um, we're gonna get to that in a minute. So I'm just doing kind of short strokes up here because the feathers at the top, the feathers at the top of the head and kind of in the underbelly are very different than the, the the rest of the long tail feather wings and the long wing feather wings. Those ones are much longer and more kind of defined. These ones are um, shorter and kind of tinier. So I'm kind of adding those in. I'm gonna work some lines in down here, this. Add in some of these belly belly feathers. He's got like a white belly. So I'm looking lots of little short lines kind of going always in the direction in the direction of the of the form. Before I get too far, I probably want to focus in a little bit on the feet. Let's see, take my HB pencil, go ahead and draw this, this leg down here. Yeah, there's my leg. So I'm really only going to see the, the front leg. And let's go ahead and draw in whatever he's standing on. Maybe he's standing on like a branch over here. And a branch that looks like that, maybe. Okay. Oops, sorry, I don't know if you could see that. I just drew a little branch in. So we're really only going to see his like front talent, his like some of his front talons. And so you can look at this picture right here for some reference. So they have like these long toes, and then they have like the the, the little, I guess, I guess they're talons. I don't know the actual names for them, but there's like long toes that can wrap around and then on um, the edge of those are like these kind of curling talon, talony shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and pencil some of those in. And I'm not going to see there's one that's going to it's, it's wrapping around the back side of this branch that you're not going to see. Okay. And then we're not going to see his other leg really. It's kind of hidden behind. And we're just going to see a hint of his toe back here. Oh, I think those toes are too long. I did them too long. You can tell just from looking that they don't fit the rest of his body. So I got to shorten them. That's a little better. I was looking at, I was looking at, I was trying to combine two different birds. <laughs> whatever, whatever bird this is, he has some really long toes. <laughs> and the bird I'm drawing here is not, his toes aren't quite as long. Okay. Some talons. All right. So the texture, so I'm actually going to remember how his leg kind of comes up. So we don't really see too much of that because his body gets in the way but his leg kind of comes up and it curves up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some more texture to the belly. So under the underside of his belly is gonna be darker because that's, you know, it's the underside. So even though the feathers are white under, underneath, he's gonna have um, the dark, the darker belly. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some of those dark strokes in here.
So I know I'm going into a lot of detail, but like I said, birds are kind of simple in terms of anatomy. So it's kind of nice to, um, to focus in on like one of the things that makes that makes this this uh, bird super textured or super super realistic is the is the feather texture. When I uh, paint birds onto my ceramics, I'm obviously not doing them in this much detail because that would be very difficult to do. If uh, when you add details on top of a of a ceramic piece, you use something called underglaze, and underglaze is very. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of tricky to work with. So it, it, you can't get as much detail as you can with like a pencil. So I, I don't work usually in this much detail when I'm doing a, a ceramic piece. Okay. Got my wing is coming around here. So there's gonna be some parts to the wing. So I'm adding in like a little triangle here that's gonna be like one different feather pattern. There's gonna be a feather pattern that's gonna come through here. So I'm actually gonna to start to like pencil that in there. These like overlapping shapes kind of overlap each other like this. And down here is going to be a different little feather pattern. The feathers are going to kind of come out like this. And then here, there's even going to be a different. So the feathers are actually going to get thin, like thinner and longer. So as as you work your way up the, the from the back of the bird to the front, the feathers actually get smaller and smaller. So the longest ones are at the back, and the the tail and the tips of the wings. So if you ever find a, a feather uh on this on the ground and you're like oh look at that nice pretty long feather that's you, you pretty much like uh, it's it's got to be a uh, a tail feather or a um or a uh, a wing a long wing feather that you found so just working like that okay there's also like some other feathers that are curving around like this back here I'm going to go in with like some uh, dark, um, some, some light and darks and add, add some contrasts to really make these feathers kind of stand out. Adding in some feather patterns down here. And I'm not being too careful about like exactly where they go. It's really just that the the lines that you that you want you really want to see. And then these actually I'm going to bring these this this wing feather out a little bit farther. These bottom tip ones. Maybe he's got some wing a couple wing feathers back here that are super long. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to come back to his tail in a minute. Tail is going to come out like that, but let's go ahead and start adding in some of these shadows. So I'm going to take the dark pencil. I'm just going to add in some shadow on each of these feathers go around the edge. I'm going to take my white. I'm going to add in some highlight here. So I'm really trying to up the contrast between the dark and the light in this drawing. I really want there to be a lot of like dark, a lot of light. And I want the, the difference in the values to really kind of come through. Let me go back in, add some of this feather up here. Oh, you can. Oh, thanks, Scott. Okay. All right. Adding some more. I'm going to take some dark and add some in. 
Make this a little bit darker. Just kind of blending. So I, I like to go back and forth between my um, two pencils and I like to, to just I just keep going back and forth and uh, changing, changing the pencils and kind of blending the two colors in. So that's, it's always like a little game. If I found that I've gone too dark, then I need to go back in and add some more lightness. If I, I find I've, I've, it's too light or their contrast is like too sharp, then I need to go back in and blend the two colors. I will say it's easier. I'm finding with this pencil, I haven't really used this pencil so much. I'm going to sharpen it. It's easier to work so you want to try to think about where those highlight areas are first and pencil those in with the white first. Oh, my pencil just broke. Let me uh, resharpen this. Um, because it's easier to leave areas that are super highlighted in white than have to like go back in and like re-jigger them. Let's try this charcoal pencil. My other one totally broke. All right, different one. Let's see, sharpen it. Okay, let's try this one. It's the same thing. It's just charcoal white. Yeah, that one works too. Okay, so like I'm gonna go ahead and on these feathers, I know there's gonna be like a white, super white highlight area in the inside of each feather. So I'm gonna go ahead and pencil that in. So you're just kind of working in like a little bit of a pattern. For these, I know I'm going to have like, each feather is going to have some highlight in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and pencil that in first. And down here. Like that. Sorry, if anybody has any questions, feel free to like type in or jump in. Sometimes I don't see uh, the comments right away. So if you have a question, um, always you can always just unmute yourself and ask. Tater actually had a comment a minute ago. It just says, whoa, that's epic. Oh, thanks, You're Tater. Wrong. Thank you. Well, you guys can do this too. Just follow along. <laughs> I'm just all uh, really uh, the, the trick really is just the contrast between the dark and the light. That's kind of what you're working on. And right now I know these lines are super stark, like the line I'm actually going to go in, I'm going to make, I'm going to darken up a little bit of the lines here. And I uh, basically all I'm doing is I'm just kind of upping. It's all about that contrast. It's all about that contrast. Um, and then I'm gonna have to go back in and soften it a little bit to blend the two colors together, to blend those, those two values. But it's really all about um, trying to get your contrast. That's what, one of the things that when I was helping judge portfolios for, I was, was working at the, for the National Art um, portfolios, Portfolio Day, um, and kids would bring me, mostly high school students would bring me their work, trying to, you know, see what, like what, what they could do to get into college. One of the things that I always saw ever, never fails, um, is that with um, student work, they, they, they never went dark enough on their, um, in, on their darks, their value tones, they, they never, they were just never complete. Like it always looked like they went halfway and then they stopped. It was like a very, very common um, thing that I saw. Uh, and it's so simple to remedy. You just need to keep going and working in and trying to blend in um, your colors to try to make those, those, those super bright, bright whites and those super dark darks and like all of those like amazing values and tones in the middle. So it's just, and a lot of it just takes time. That's why, um, if you're, if you're applying to colleges and you, um, uh, are, uh, and you're, you're making your portfolios, like they, sometimes some schools will, will give you suggestions on, on like timing on how much time to spend on each, um, drawing and for a college pieces for, for, uh, portfolio pieces, sometimes they say like no fewer than like at least three hours. And the truth is, is that 
for depending on what you're doing, it can take you a lot, lot longer. So don't be afraid to spend some time with something. I find it's much harder to overwork something than it is to um, underwork. <laughs> that's my that's my feeling. I'm gonna sharpen my other charcoal pencil. I like it a little bit better. I'm coming back in and I, when I work, I tend to go back and forth between different areas. Oh, my pencil broke again. Pencil, these pencils today, man, every time. Tater, how, how have you been doing? Like what, uh, have you been working on anything lately? Uh, currently I'm drawing like the bird but like as a horror monster because I mentioned it and now I must do it. Sweet, that's awesome. I can't wait to see that. That's gonna be awesome. All right, so I'm taking my, I'm gonna do my 3B, I'm gonna blend some of these colors in. Darken up some of these shadows underneath each wing, each feather, like right here and here. Take that white, go in and like and blend in some of these colors. You can also use, I, I rarely use it, but you can use a, um, this is like a, a stump and you can use it if you want to blend things. It's just like a, it's like a, it's a blending stump and you can use it to kind of smudge and mix your colors. I, I tend to use it occasionally, but it can be nice to like, if you have areas where you're like, that are really small to kind of get in to kind of blend colors. You can always use this tool to kind of get you some, some, some good blending. Um, I feel like when you use it though, it, you, it can, you can have a tendency to lose some of that awesome texture um, because it, it makes it very um, uniform and very smooth looking, which is not kind of what I was going for on this drawing. So you kind of have to be careful with it. Ah, I'm just pressing down real hard. My pencil keeps breaking. I think this pencil, the lead must be like affected. I think there's, there's some, something going on with that pencil. It must have dropped or something and like the graphite or the, the charcoal is broken. There we go. That's a little better. Okay, that's looking better. All right, so. There we have, and I'm going to go in, I'm going to kind of add some, some darkness underneath here and add in some graphite down here, blend in those feathers, make this area a little bit darker because it is underneath the wing. So this area is going to be in shadow down here. Gonna blend that in a little bit. It's gonna kind of come out like that. All right. There we go. And let's darken this up a little bit over here. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of quiet today because I don't. Um, there's not much. Obviously, what if if you're if you want to do a specific type of bird, like if you're your character is like a, a parrot or like a toucan or a hummingbird, the, the proportions are gonna be different. So you have to take that into account when you are drawing. Um, here. And 
looking at examples is always like looking at, at different reference images is, is I always, always, always suggest looking uh, as closely as you can at some, a bunch of reference images to, to get some good examples. Um, it always makes your drawing look a little bit more real when you are really looking at it. And the best thing to do is, is, is if you, if you can, if you can, if you have a bird feeder, if you have got something where you can actually sit and look at, um, at real birds, that's like a totally different style. Um, but also equally, equally um, as important to learn. Okay. Let's see here. Now for his tail feathers, I'm going to start with that white. And I'm just going to come out. And I'm going to do, I'm going to have like a kind of an elegant like tail feather that's coming out like this. And another one underneath it. Right here. And then there's going to be another curving one down like that. HB pencil, kind of start to shade in. So has anybody else been working on any kind of drawing this summer? Anything you're, you're uh, in, like excited about or anybody have any projects going on? This is, by the way, this is like an advanced level drawing that I'm, we're doing today. <laughs> this is this is like a lot, a lot, a lot of detail. If 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 anybody in this class was was un, under the age of like of like I don't know, I would say maybe ten, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't wouldn't have done this this project. But I kind of had a feeling that it was going to be. Uh, some of the some of the old regular regular standard standard uh, uh, people who join this class attendees. So in that case, I knew you guys could handle something that was a little bit more challenging. Go back in with this. Define some of these lines a little bit. All right. Alex says, My bird looks so mad, I'm going to do something. <laughs> Your bird looks so mad. <laughs> Oh no, why does he look, does he look mad? Is he gonna like, like, look, maybe he's gonna like, maybe somebody stole his, his, um, his, his worm. <laughs> Actually, funny enough, I saw a bird this morning, literally like on my front doorstep that had a worm. And I, I feel like it was surprising because that's something that I don't normally see. <laughs> you found art piece from 2019? Wow, that's cool. Yeah, it's, you know what, it's so interesting to always look back at your work. So on this trip I took, because I, I told you I drove to Seattle with my family. Um, and we visited some family members and I found some they had in their house some of my old uh, ceramic art that I had I had I had gifted them. And I just, it's so funny, like when you look back at all of your old pieces and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I gave that to somebody. <laughs> like my work is so much better now, but that's, it's kind of a, that's the, the curse of being an artist is you're always improving. <laughs> uh, and you always uh, can go back and kind of see 
like where you could like you know see see where you went wrong <laughs> but that's one of the reasons why i like to date my pieces because i think it's just really interesting to kind of give your give yourself some reference so that you, when you do go back and see pieces that you worked on when you were younger you're like oh my gosh how old was i when i did that and what like like <laughs> what was i thinking <laughs> But I love that you're going back and reworking. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. There we go. So here's my bird so far. Um, I obviously need to keep where he do his legs. So I'm gonna focus in on the legs now. Um, now the legs are kind of a little bit of a different texture. They're the only part of the bird other than the beak and the eye that is not feathered. So uh, it's, he's gonna have a little bit of a different texture going on here. I'm going to sharpen this pencil. I'm going to use my HB pencil to kind of start penciling in. You know what? Maybe I will see some of his, his talon there back here. Maybe there's like one of his little uh, bits back here. Okay. So he's got one coming through here. And then there's another one back here. And then there's this other leg. And we're gonna see maybe just maybe one claw is kind of coming up like this, curving around that. So we'll see if that one. Let me take my research. When you really start looking closely at like the details of birds, like like, you're not wrong, Tater, in that they look kind of monstrous. They're very creepy. Like, you can see how they, you could easily get like a, a kind of a creepy um, horror character out of a bird. I don't know, has anybody ever watched Hitchcock's The Birds before? An old, old horror movie. Have you ever seen it, Scott? I have seen it. I've seen it a couple times. Oh my gosh. It's terrifying. If you're into horror movies, mm -hmm. <laughs> I found it terrifying, but I'm a, I'm an easy, uh, I'm easy to scare. I'm not a, I'm not a great horror horror fan person because I just, I'm too gullible and I like, I think everything is, uh, <laughs> everything is real. And then I think about it for, you know, forever afterwards. <laughs> but it's kind of creepy, it's just all the birds attack. So I'm going in with my white pencil and I'm just adding in some like little wrinkles because the, the, when you look closely at the, the, the toes and the legs of a bird, they're, they're kind of like bumpy and wrinkly. They have, they have a texture, it's just not the same texture as the feathers. So I'm going in and I'm kind of adding in some of that detail with the white first because it's easier to, work with the white first on this paper. And then I'll go back in, in with my darker tones and add in some darker values and blend all these colors together. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my HP pencil and I'm going to go in and kind of define a little bit. Um, so like there's some lines that are coming up here like this. And then we've got like his dark talons kind of coming out. But even the Roadrunner, when you look at the Roadrunner, he's got the, the same, like his, his, the texture on his toes are very different than the texture that they've, that he's, that is drawn on the rest of his body. A Roadrunner is also an interesting bird to draw. So, all right, other than the Roadrunner and Tweety Bird, what are some other, what, who, to everybody tell, can you write in your, in the comments what your favorite cartoon bird is? Do you have one, if you can think of one? 
Mine's definitely Roadrunner. He's just, <laughs> he's definitely just like the smartest. Donald, yeah, that's a good one. Who else has a favorite? go. I think the white on his legs is a little too bright, so I'm going to tone it down a little bit with a little bit of shading. Make it look a little bit less bright. The dance between darks and the lights. I feel like I'm always going in and like, like brightening things up and then darkening them and then brightening them up and then darkening them. Because as soon as you add one shade, as soon as you add some, make something brighter, then you realize, oh no, now I have to make the darks like I have to make them darker to match. So I feel like it's always a play between the two when you're working um, with pencils. Okay. All right, I think I'm happy with this. I need to just lightly pencil in the rest of this stump. It's gonna come in, maybe this is the opening of the stump. I'm being really loose with the stump here. It's kind of coming down like that. There we go. Add a little bit of texture to it. Okay, well, there we have a penguin from the, <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, I'm going back and reading your, uh, all of your comments. Skipper, the little chicken and the foghorn, <laughs> the chicken hawk. That's a good one, Scott. I never, don't ever think about the chicken hawk. Um, ooh, a penguin. Oh, he, so he's a penguin from the Madagascar movie. Ooh, I like definitely have to go back and rewatch that. I haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> Those are some good ones. Those are some really good ones, guys. Oh my gosh, it is 324. All right. Well, so we don't have much time, but that's okay because when you're going from a realistic drawing to a cartoon drawing, so the, the realistic drawing kind of comes first. And if you were going to cartoonify your bird, basically, it's super simple. You would just take out all the detail. <laughs> so I'm actually not going to have to, I'm not going to really have any time to do this, but it's over. <laughs> the pinnacle of bird characters. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's true. It is true. Um, so, uh, one of the other things that we didn't really talk about was we did, I did a bird kind of sitting, but if I was going to do a bird flying or a bird, like switch spots, I was going to do a bird that was like, you know, in, in, in mid air, it might be kind of fun to do that too. So depending on what kind of character you want for a cartoon bird, I would exaggerate some of the features. So for a cartoon, if I was going to do a really cute cartoon bird, um, I'm sure you probably have already heard about with from Naleen because she's really good at teaching this, but like the circles are a very friendly shape and a lot of car cute cartoon characters have oversized heads. That's actually why humans, why we think that, um, that, that babies and baby animals are so cute, um, because their heads proportionally to the rest of their bodies are really big. <laughs> um, and it makes them look really, really cute. So if you want like a cute bird, 
it's kind of nice to have an oversized head. And I'm starting out with the same shapes. I'm just making, I'm just exaggerating the head and making it like way bigger than the body. And then I'm gonna give it a real, some really big eyes over here. And I'm gonna come back and his beak is gonna probably gonna come, maybe we'll do a smaller beak. Maybe a cute little tiny beak coming in maybe right about here. And then his wings, maybe this bird is gonna be like, maybe he's flying. So like his, maybe his wing is kind of taking off like this. So you're still gonna have the same basic shape. But you're just gonna have a curve, it's gonna kind of curve around like that, like that. And then his tail is gonna be super simple. So you wanna start with super simple shapes. I'm like, one, sorry, two. Lee, could, are you able to zoom in on this? Oh, one? I am. Sorry. Dark? I am able to zoom. You know what? Let me just go over it so that it's a little darker. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. And I know I'm working kind of fast, but uh, yeah, I was just adding in kind of some simple shapes like this. Here's the body, the body shape, the head shape was kind of coming around like that. And I haven't finished penciling in the eye yet, but the beak is going to kind of go around right about here tail and then i think we would see his back let's i'm gonna give him some big cartoon eyes and liliana and heather rose would like to share whenever you're ready oh totally give me one second let me just finish penciling in this uh this other wing so his other wing would kind of come back here and they would like go around like that so a lot of a lot of um, making a cartoon character is kind of knowing the basics of the character or of the of the creature that you're trying to cartoonify, and kind of just making them really exaggerated. So it's taking the same things that we just drew and that we just drew in a ton of detail and simplifying it. So like here's let me make this a little rounder. He's got like these kind of roundish eyes and I'm making him really big. And adding in, I'll add in some reflections in here. Kind of like that, like that better. All right, so here's like a super simple cartoonified version of a bird. And I didn't add his feet in, but I could do his feet in a minute. But yeah, go ahead, um, Liliana, Heather, Rosie, I would love to see. Um, here's my bird. Oh, he's so cute. That's a, that's a really good one. And also that's a really good eye. Oh so. yeah, I was also doing coloring practice. <laughs> nice. Oh, I like the, the, what's on the top? Is that like a latte or like a cup of coffee? Yeah, I, I, I'm not really sure. It's some kind of optimal drink. <laughs> nice. Looks good. Yeah, the coloring, the coloring is great. And the wine glass looks, the shapes, like the, Everything looks really nice. Nice work. Thank you. And then, oh, up the top, is that your other little bird? Your, your cartoon oh, yeah. bird? I just did that. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. See, this, it, it never fails. Whenever you make the head big, it, the character looks cute. Never fails. Um, so here's my first picture. Oh, that's awesome. That's amazing. That bird is incredible. I like the color, the colors you chose. Uh, I was also working on some of my characters' color schemes. I just didn't finish yet. Ooh, those that hair! Oh man, is she like like that? Like she looks like wild, like flame hair going on. That's awesome. Oh, sorry. Let me put my let me switch cameras so that you guys can see my face. Hold on a second. But I love it. You guys did an awesome job. That looks that looks amazing. <laughs> were you were you guys looking at references when you were doing the bird or for your colors or did you just kind of choose? Just curious. Oh, you're writing in comment. Oh, nice. Awesome. Very cool. Um, does anybody else want to share? Tater would like to share. Love to see Tater. Hello, as usual, since I am working digitally, let me quick pull that up. Mm -hmm. um, these are the bird sketches I'm going to see. Aha, I can't read those. Oh, and cool. it consists of like the outer coating of the bird and then like 
the bony part of the bird. <laughs> that's great. Oh my gosh, Tater, that's amazing. I love that you worked in layers. Oh and then my we God. also got the monster bird, which I never bothered to finish, but like. Oh, he's amazing. He's yeah, amazing. Uh, Those talons on the ends of his, uh, his little, his little like chicken, chicken arms. Yeah, this is oh. the thing that will appear in my nightmares from now on. So yeah. Fun. Oh, and even then this is the progress that I have on my redraw of this very sad, horrible piece. <laughs> <laughs> There's already great improvement. Oh my gosh, Tater, I want you to keep this. I want you to date. And I, I want, I think, wouldn't it be so cool if like, how many, the first one was from 2019, so it was two years ago? Yeah. <laughs> I want you to save it in two years from now. I want you to even redo it again. I think that'd be so cool yeah. to have like a full on progression piece. I think that just like, as like a concept. That's so awesome. <laughs> That's so neat. Awesome. I love it. Really good work. And I, I especially love that you've done, you did the layers of the bird. <laughs> um, if anybody else wants to share, you are welcome to. Otherwise, um, otherwise we are going to, uh, <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna call it here. But yeah, I know Alex. Was, the bony part was really really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Would anybody else like? Would anyone else like to share? No worries. Well, I hope no matter what you drew, no matter if you if you even drew, if you just want if you just watched, I hope you still picked something up. Um, it's totally fine to do that, by the way. I, I don't expect that anybody draws along with me every time. It's totally fine if you just are watching. Um, um, but as always, we are a donation based studio. So if you can, if you have uh, the means to, please donate. Scott just added in the, uh, the link to donate is right there kind of how we are able to keep offering these classes every day to you guys, even through the summer. Um, so uh, let your friends know, spread the word. Our classes are, our sizes are kind of shrinking. I know it's the summer, but the hope is that in the fall, we, we boost the numbers up. So if you have friends that are into drawing, let them know as well. Okay, all right, I hope you guys had fun. Oh, thanks Scott for mentioning that. Um, starting this, so it actually it's already open, but there's a huge exhibit. If you guys happen to be in Southern California, I'm not sure where you're, where you are, but if you're, if you're in Southern California and you're near, um, the Great Park in Irvine, there, uh, sorry, in Orange, uh, there is uh, a whole exhibit of Chuck Jones's work that, that went up that Scott just, um, uh, helped put up and it's amazing. And we're also going to be doing all these events starting um, this weekend. So there's a they're totally free drawing events. Like I, it's like a kind of, we're calling it, it's kind of like a, a drop in and draw where you can come in and draw characters. And if you're, if you stop by, you can come and see us in person. Oh my gosh, I can come see you in person. Uh, Scott will be there, I'll be there, Nailene will be there. Ben, will Ben be, no, Ben won't be there. No, no. Ben won't be there. Yeah, but, uh, but Daryl will be there, fingers crossed. Uh, we will all hopefully be there and it would be awesome to see you. Um, so go ahead, click on the link. And I think it's every, it's one, there's, there's uh, events one Saturday every, for the next three months. So the first one, the one for July is this coming Saturday. And then there's two more dates. There's one in August and then there's another one in September. I don't know them off the top of my head. I have to look at my calendar. Do you know them, Scott? Not right off the top of my head. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. The most There's important a lot going is, on. <laughs> yeah, the most important one is this Saturday. So if you yeah. can, you should stop by. It's totally free. You can check out some of um, Chuck's work in person, which is awesome. And uh, you can come draw with us for real. <laughs> okay. All right. I hope you guys had fun. I will see you next week. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bye. Lee. Yeah, no problem. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.